Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, and welcome to Digression Session, episode two, our childhood TV shows, the 90s preferably, because we're going to go back probably in more episodes about talking stuff, but we wanted to talk about 90s TV. We all grew up in the 90s here in this podcast, and we're going to talk about a few shows that are quite close to our hearts, and if you haven't heard of them, by God, you're going to have fun researching them, because I sure as heck did. I did not realize one of my shows is an acid fuel trip. And I realized why I liked it when I was a kid. I'm one of your co-hosts, Lee. Across the table from me is my good friend, Ben. How you doing, Ben? I'm good. Are you excited for this episode? Yeah, you... I mean, I managed to do about two minutes research and just hope that my natural ability to talk shit can kick in. I love but that. I'm... I absolutely <laughs> love that. And then the man behind the podcast again is our main man, Dan. How you doing, Dan? Yeah, I'm good. Cheers, Lee. Okay, so... Not behind this podcast. I know. There's there's so much because we do two podcasts. Obviously, we do our Discraft. our I disc know, heads. I know, I I said that. You I did. It's just, it's because it's on his mind. Remember when we said officially we will not bring up disc golf episode two, ladies and gentlemen. We started talking about disc golf already, <laughs> but yeah. So we do another <laughs> podcast uh, for amateur disc golfers uh, called Disc Heads, uh, and this episode and this series we're doing uh, digression session is where we talk about topics that we kind of talk about while we're around just playing disc golf but also just in our general free time because we just laugh about stuff and today is 90s kids television now where do we begin because i've got three fun are you fun start house. are we starting with fun house we we're gonna start with fun house it's wacky it's fun it's crazy it's Contestants, messy games, the fun car Grand Prix race, and a crazy chase to win lots of prizes. Now here's the guy that puts the fun in fun house. Pat Sharp. After we recorded the last one, yeah, um, we spoke about so fun good. house, and I was then pulled into a fun house. Yeah, were you pulled into Rabbit a fun house? house? Yeah. They pulled into a fun house rabbit hole. It was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> How many episodes have you watched? Uh, about eight or nine. Okay, because so <laughs> I feel like we've all done a decent amount of research on the shows we've done. Well, I've done no reading, right? I've you've done, done none. I've done fun house <laughs> like I watched it when I was a kid, just with a big smile on my face going, run you little penguin. <laughs> <laughs> so what is fun house? So if people fun are listening to this. Great. What is fun? fun house it, it does sound great, and there's loads of rant. I remember Funhouse quite fondly, but who wants to tie, try and digression into whatever this is? Firstly, you're going to need Pat Sharp. Pat yeah. Sharp. With the most Amazing phenomenal mullet. haircut you've ever seen. The, the perfect mullet. It doesn't have the mullet to start with. He had, it a, sh he had a short it's a more more... Yeah. Oh, so he went David Beckham esque with yeah. curtains and then. Grew the mullet in. And grew the mullet, the mullet in. Mullet so, But in. it was before Beckham, though, I believe, right? Funhouse? It was definitely before. Oh, possibly. Definitely yeah. before Beckham. Before all the madness. Then you're going to need two twins. Yes. Well, twins. Twins. Plus two. There is. Yeah. Twins. You're going to need <laughs> Pat Sharp. One set of twins. <laughs> One pair of twins. And what was the whole point of these twins? Were they his co-hosts or how, no, how were they? they? Pat Sharp was your host. Yes. Did they tell you what here. the score was, maybe? That's all no, they did. They, they were from the different teams. So you had then have two kids, typically a boy and a girl. Okay. On each team. Right. right. So you had a red team and a yellow team. Okay. A red cheerleader and a yellow cheerleader. Okay. And they Hence the twins. Right. The kids needed to do certain things. We're not talking about the game shows of today, right? So Okay, so what did you have to do if you were a so, contestant on this show? Right, so if you were a contestant, you had to enter two out of three games, depending on the how the episode was working. And okay. Then, and these games were... So, the last game I watched was... Um, I'm well excited about this, because I did not watch Funhouse. I, I got 
my so second show I did, I watched lots of episodes. giant shoes onto these kids' knees. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in already. What? And they had to use, they had to crawl around on their knees. Right. Obviously. Crush the balloon. Crush the balloon with these giant shoes on their knees. With their knees. Then crawl around this like tunnel. I love this. Put a soap on the rope round their neck. <laughs> right. Right. Whilst their opposing team was throwing buckets of gunge all over them. What? <laughs> buckets, <laughs> soap, buckets, buckets of, of gunge. gunge. Amazing. <laughs> and then kneel back round and smash another balloon. Repeat the cycle. Question. That's amazing. Do you think maybe there are no game shows with gunge nowadays because they used all the gunge in the 90s and it's it was just not it was, it was just the 90s <laughs> was, was the gunge it was the gunge era they've and that was it. it they've used it all there just isn't <laughs> I, mean, I wonder if any research has been done about the after effects of gunge I wonder if there is years later <laughs> Imagine what there's a lawsuit. Gunge? There's a lawsuit on Gunge. Like it's affected me. I can't walk what is anymore. Gunge? What is it? It just it's looks. It, it, it looks like. What is it, it looks like flubbery paint, doesn't it? And it just it's super gooey, like gooey Angel Delight. Angel Delight is a. Are you aware? Yeah. Of a sh- are you aware of a show called Get Your Own Back? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to bring it up, but the slide gunge. at the end. Gunge. Yeah. Gunge. Tons of gunge in that. Loads of gunge. What right. about Noel? What's it? Noel, Noel, Noel Edmonds' Edmund's house party. party. That was gunge. also a thing. Gunge. That's what I mean. There's just no more gunge. There is no more gunge. I literally love. I love the fact that if you're listening to this on Podbean, you're just hearing us talk about all this thing. Yet there's a montage of gunge going on <laughs> on YouTube right now. Good. Good. That's yeah. But ha- Funhouse seems to be like you would just go through certain like. Activities, and then obviously you had the ending, which I fondly remember. Well, no, you, you, had a, you had a double ending. You had a right? double ending. Yeah. So you you do one of these tasks, like I explained, and the cheerleaders right. were like on that team. They're the ones putting the balloons in the face, for example. Okay. They were more needed. So Pat Sharper go right. We're going to do this task now, and he'll half explain it. And one of the kids run off because he's the one who's going to dress up in the big suit of shoes that he's going to. Come around <laughs> okay. I'm going to explain what to do. You're just going to go get changed while yeah. I explain and to one your of colleague. The cheerleaders right. Is basically there. Tying them up or tying these things onto them, put them in their harnesses. All right, okay. So doing. whatever they have to do, okay. Yeah. So the cheerleader is almost there to. <laughs> it's the safety expert, like yeah. safety uh, oh, right. advisor. Yes, yeah, so it gets better, right? There ain't no safety. It's the nineties. <laughs> the double ending. Okay. And the first part of the ending on every week. We had the go karts. Yes. Right. The Funhouse Grand Prix. The Funhouse, Funhouse Grand, Grand Prix. Prix. Gary, Mario Kart in real life. So good. It's so good. That's, so I wanted to do drive, that so bad. Oh, yeah. So they're driving around an indoor circuit. Yeah. I know. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Originally bashing buttons as they went by, but that yeah. made a change yeah. to yes. tokens. Yeah. So encouraged to drive one handed <laughs> <laughs> around a circuit. And then they did a lot of pit stops. So okay. They did. Did they pull in and swap with the yeah, other so driver? Three laps. Oh, okay. The first one pulled in. Right. Swap with the other driver. Okay. He drove around and also pressed buttons, or she. Oh, she, yeah. yeah. He or she, he yeah. She. The he, she. The individual Ugh. in question. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, are we all? They both had a go at pressing buttons. To okay. And each, each of these buttons were worth like 10, 5 points. Right? Okay, all right. And then the last lap was just a lap. And it was whoever crossed first also scored some okay. bonus points. So that's when it became a race. And then most right. points... And a bit like gladiators, the more points you made <coughs> got you. earlier on gave you a head start in the Grand Prix. I don't know. I feel like that's a real big disadvantage with it comes to like you're in a very fast moving vehicle. You got a 30 second head start. Well, I'm not going to, I'm not Michael Schumacher or anyone. Yeah. I've lost. Yeah, no, I don't think it was like that. Well, that's I think bad it, if I think it, it is. I pole position. That's what I'm going to say head start. It wasn't got like you. Got a 30 second old okay, head start. Okay, cool, cool. Because whoever started in pole position. Right. Neck and neck. Okay. Surely what you do is you just drive real slow and press the buttons. <laughs> Well, like for 30 seconds. That's how I'd do it. Yeah. If you, yeah, if you got yeah. a head start, you'd just be like... You make oh. sure you get the buttons. Yeah. So right. It, it was more of a pole position. Thing. Yeah. Fine. Okay. All right. So, when they pulled in for the pitch stop, okay. the cheerleader would run onto the track, grab the back of the go-kart, <laughs> and try and just pull it to a stop. Obviously, the kids are pressing the brake and letting go of the accelerator. Be, so, they were the emergency brake. But they were the emergency brake. Jeez. How- <laughs> Jeez Louise. <laughs> and then your main finale. Which yeah. Which was like the fun house. The fun house. Yes. Yeah. So that had lots of different obstacles in it. And you had to run around and grab these tokens. And they were like air luggage tag things. But like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it had like... And it was a huge set. 
That was the craziest thing I've realised in the research of Funhouse as well as one of my shows. Massive the sets fan. were amazing. Oh, yeah. Huge. I would hate to clean up after them, but by God, the sets were impressive. Like, no wonder we loved it as kids. It's just manic and mass chaos. I love it. But, yeah, doesn't it? What I found really interesting, and I shared a bit with you, was the prizes they won was shit. Yeah. Like, I remember watching it thinking, oh, I'd love to go on that and win all that. Yeah. Like, a personal cassette player. Well, back in the day, that's pretty impressive. Oh, One of the star prizes. What was, was it? Though? A night of bowling with your mates. Oh, <laughs> mate. So that's like someone's birthday party back in the day. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> mate. Yeah, that's not great. Getting on a birthday party and it's nobody's birthday. <laughs> 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 it was kind of like when you watch Bullseye and they go like, oh yeah, you can win a boat. And he's like, oh, I'd live nowhere near a lake or a pond or, <laughs> or the ocean. Yeah, but I want a boat. Awesome. Like, don't really need Brilliant. that though. Here's what you could have right. won. Here's what you could have won. It's one of my dad's catchphrases that like, if like, life was going shit, it would just turn around to me and go, here's what you could have won. <laughs> <laughs> and then normally go on to tell me what I could have won. <laughs> I, look, I look back at some of the prizes you could have won, but looking at it through a kid's perspective, that was awesome. Like, a selection of video games. Oh, yeah, sweet. I mean, a selection of this. Oh, that's cool. I'd take that now. Yeah. Like, awesome. But I then you look back. Twining around a fun house for half an hour, getting covered in gunge. Gunge. There's no gunge. There well, is no gunge. gunge. Where are they getting the gunge from? <laughs> is it? <laughs> There isn't any. We've established that there is no gun. If there was gunge, we'd have had game shows with gunge in the last 20 years. The gunge shortage. The gunge shortage of the 90s. That's why tell is shit. <laughs> no, because there's no <laughs> they gunge. gunge. Because they lost gunge. Bring they back gunge. Use the pull the gunge or they lost the recipe. Do you think Ninja Warrior would be amazing if they replaced the water with gunge? It'd be better with gunge. It would be better with gunge. Like a pool of custard. Almost. Yeah. But I bet that's what it probably... It looks like the consistency of custard ah, with a shit custard. tons of food dye in it. It'd be better than... It'd be better with gunge, let's be honest. It probably would be. Yeah. If this podcast, podcast, podcast ever goes to video, <laughs> can we try <laughs> lots of different gunge recipes on your leg? Okay. I'm gonna, <laughs> this is what happens. These. Right. This is why these podcasts take so long to come out because, you know, you, you keep saying shit and I'm like, man, I'm uh, entitled also, to do this. <laughs> Also, right. what were we? There was somebody said something, and it's throwing me. Ninja Warrior, Gunge. Yes. Yes. Ninja Warrior. What's the other one? You think it was Takeshi's Castle? No. Big Red Balls. Oh, Wipeout. 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 With Gunge. With Gunge would be pretty good. Didn't they? Cover people and shit in Wipeout. They did, but it was also very water. It was water based, though, wasn't it? As well. Like you fell in, you just like swim quickly to the other obstacle. Yeah, maybe. Should be Gunge. It should be Gunge. This is what I mean. They definitely lost the recipe for gunge. <laughs> or like there just isn't any more gunge. If you had like a semi-thick consistency of gunge on Ninja Warrior, you can actually have an obstacle of just gunge. Yeah, you, gunge like is the obstacle. Ninja over it. Ninja over it. I'm saying. Lily pads. Right? Like literally light to Keshi's Castle, but with gunge. No. That'd be worth it. You just have that ramp that runs to the pool. <laughs> just cover it in gunge and then have the hand bike or whatever it is. <laughs> From gladiators. Yes, gunge along and then jump. Use the gunge as momentum. I love right? this. You slide along on the gunge. <laughs> but if you don't time the jump right, the yeah. gunge is sending you into a pool of gunge. I feel, I feel like gunge might have claimed some people or might have I'm given some people some a fatalities. Gunge counter for this. Should we, do you want a gunge counter for this? The amount of times we say the word gunge. Jesus yeah. Christ. So Just give me more work on this podcast. I love it. Um, yeah, so, so just giving you more work all over. Just give me more work all over. My Gladiators episode is like halfway done while recording this. It, there is so much we talk about where I've gone like that clip, this clip, that clip is so mad. So honestly. I found a... I was thinking earlier because I... I'm not going to... The game that we haven't spoken about. Okay. You, you did some filming over the weekend. Like yes. Weekend. I really can't wait to see like, some of these shots. And I thought it's going to be so long before Lee gets that. Exactly. Out. We don't so have good. editors, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> although um, the although that said video, my friend has already claimed that he wants to do voiceover for it to oh, make it feel good. like a golf, like a, like you are actually at Excellent. the Masters. So yeah, he's in. Um, yeah, it's going to be fun. Yes, go post for it. Fun, post fun house. Facts. Fat sharp. Facts. Controversy. Okay. So I'm the man who brings All right. the controversy. I'm, controversy for I'm loving this. I'm going to add later. ominous, scary music because I've done that on the Gladiators episode and it's freaking hilarious. Um, so I'm adding it here. So Pat Sharp okay. recently lost a radio job for making a comment about some woman's boobs. Okay. 
I can't find. Oh. What was the quote? Here we go. All oh, right. Former arms sharp had given said woman a T-shirt with his face and famous mullet from the nineties, of course, printed on it, and then said, "That's the only way I'll get on your tits today." <laughs> wow. He got fired. Yeah, he got he fired lost, for he lost that his job. I wouldn't even say that sexist. Getting on me tits is something that... It's yeah, HR, it, ain't it? That's a HR thing. I know there's a double... You, yeah, obviously, oh. your <laughs> response is like, oh, you're getting on my tits. He meant... It's a very British saying, that. though, I that is. I think he was doing a double on Tantra thing, and I don't know. We are in 2023. You yeah, can say apologies, anything, and it, apologies. Sacked. But yeah, it's 2023. You can but say also, anything and get into trouble. Mullet. We're still admiring the mullet. Look at that mullet. We're still admiring the money. What's the other controversy then that you have then, uh, uh, Sir Dan? Is it to do with Funhouse? No, it's to do with Jamie Feeks then. Pardon? So, so who's that guy? Uh, Jamie... Big Breakfast. Yeah, and he did Live and Kick In, Top of the Pops, The Ozone. Okay, um, so not Funhouse related, but just random fun facts. There's random fun facts about Jamie Feeks then. So I've watched none of them programs. I've watched Live and Kicking. I can remember Live and Kicking. I, I, I remember a Live bit and Kicking. Live and Kicking. I remember Live and Kicking because a few of my shows are from Live and Kicking when I was a is kid. Is that the one? That's not the one Adam Deck was on, was it? That no. was like SMN TV. PQ, yeah. Like. So Live and Kicking was like you basically had a cartoon and they would have some like cool kind of game show in between and they would have contestants. So it was kind of like the Big Breakfast but with kids and basically you would have like two teams they would have like they would do quizzes in between oh, watching the shows and stuff Power Rangers and shit was on every, yeah. every big show was on there yeah every so big anyway, show was on there so anyway this guy yep gets into a situation in which he's um, <laughs> basically having an orgy with three prostitutes and a brothel oh <laughs> And some birds kick the door down, take photos of him, and try and blackmail him. And oh. instead of being blackmailed, he just came clean and said, yeah, this was going on. What I found really funny about this is <laughs> okay. his explanation. His right? explanation? Whenever it starts with, this is the first time this happened, and you think you was having an orgy with three prostitutes, I really hope this was the first time <laughs> this happened. Okay. <laughs> um... It was one night before Christmas that went a bit too far. <laughs> that's his excuse. That's, his that's excuse. amazing. That is literally, that's, yeah. Up and out of Christmas Eve and it's gone a bit too far. Weren't with three prostitutes. Weren't with three prostitutes in a brothel. <laughs> but. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. Yeah, I just got home late. <laughs> it's Christmas. Kind of five to twelve. I was waiting for like another excuse. He was just like, yeah, I fell in the room and this happened. Like something that bad. Well, or just like a, that much of an excuse. So he just, Wow. Fair play to him. Okay, controversy well, over. He, oh, no, uh, no, he still goes. He, he has he got another on. claim for it? Or was yeah, that it? He did carry on. Oh, okay. Um, and again, this is where I think he's actually solid. <laughs> I know it was foolish for me to get into this situation in the first place, but I'm not married. I'm a single guy. And I haven't broken the law. Okay. So he's generally saying I've made a mistake in a brothel, having a, an orgy. It was Christmas, thought I'd treat myself. Yeah. Fair, fair play, you know, at least you come clean. That's all we've got to say. Oh, fun times at Richmond High. But there is some controversy for Blue Peter. Oh my gosh, I literally love the fact that we're finding there all this controversy. controversy. There is always controversy for Blue Peter. I just love this. So Blue Peter, if you're if you're a foreign listener, was a show where basically you could learn so much stuff. And there's funny enough, Blue Peter controversy will segue into my first show really well because I built something following Blue Peter's arts and crafts section. And I thought we'd end up talking about Blue Peter. Yeah. But it's quite a well-known controversy. It's, um, what's his face, Bacon. Oh, Kevin. No, not no. Kevin Bacon. Um, Kevin, Bacon. Kevin Bacon was not on. He was. Blue if, it Peter. would be amazing if he was on. He was on um, Blue Peter. It would be definitely a different type of Blue Peter. It would definitely be yeah, a different Richard type. Bacon. Richard Bacon. And he was doing coke. And was he? Yeah. Oh, well, that and explains. He's, and he just said, "I regret what I did, but it was in my personal time, <laughs> and therefore I hope it don't reflect on the show." Like anyone's watching Blue Peter, thinking he's on coke. He's on coke. <laughs> I, I literally love the fact that all this controversy we find when we're like, does it tarnish the shows we watched as a kid? Not at all. We laugh at some of the things like... I don't remember Richard Bacon on... He was Peter. with Katie Hill, I think, and the others. I remember watching it because of Katie Hill. 
I think it's Katie Hill. That's her name. Uh, and then you had what? Who was married to Fatboy Slim for ages as well? Zoe. Was it Zoe Ball? Yeah, Zoe Ball. Yeah, yeah. Zoe Ball was on Blue Peter. Yeah. I remember it just because of the hot I host. remember everybody else you've mentioned. I just Except. Don't, I just don't remember Richard, Richard Bacon. Bacon. But maybe that's because I know him as the older comedian that he's slowly become. Maybe yeah. We call him a comedian. Yeah. The older personality that he's become. 100%. I like that. That's not taking anything away from him. No, I not like at him all. Him yeah, he is. He's but not, Blue Peter was... Not one of your interests in. I don't know. I don't yeah, know I like so, so Blue Peter was a, an interesting show because it was aimed at kids. And the idea was you basically had segments where it was just like about wildlife or something. Or they had like a guest on that had like something... I don't know. They normally brought on wild animals. Always wild animals or something like that. And then they'd talk about like something like video games or like films. And then they would do an arts and crafts section, which I very fondly remember because I always tried to re repeat it. And then you also had the infamous Blue Peter badge, wasn't it? Like if you did something, you could get a Blue Peter badge. So moving on from no, Blue... Let's stick with Blue Peter. I'm going to talk about Blue Peter because I, I, I built something Blue Peter was talking about. Tracy Island. Yes. So... I want to talk about Thunderbirds, which we'll get to on a second, but... Do you know that at the time, that, um... Oh, was it... Uh, not about to say Anakin Rice, but... <laughs> <that's the name. laughs> Bless you. <laughs> who rebuilt it? Who rebuilt it? No, who built uh, Tracy Island? I can't, can't think of a name. Thunderbirds. Um, oh, the woman... <laughs> <laughs> I forget. I want to say I just could just keep remembering Katie Hill because that's oh is it Katie? Pr I can't I'm remember. No, Katie Price is Jordan. That's I'm someone completely Rice different. In my head. I know it wasn't Monica Rice. <laughs> no, but yeah, I remember it, building it as a kid and was like, this is really awesome because I loved uh, Thunderbirds. Well, it's the most recorded thing. Yeah. Like uh, back in the day when you used to record TV. Yep. There was. I don't know how they know, but... They <laughs> had... That was, yeah. Legend has it. Legend it? has it. Making Tracy Island was the thing. And I remember we built it on Blue Peter, and then we were l quite lucky as kids. That Christmas, the most hottest toy was Tracy Island, and we were fortunate to get it. Yeah, so, so same as my brother. So yeah, we, yeah so we, we had both, and we sent one off. Uh, we obviously destroyed one, and we kept one. And yeah, that's my childhood show that I want to bring up. Thunderbirds. Five, four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. Uh -oh. I absolutely love Thunderbirds. Now, Thunderbirds was like a 60s puppet show, which sounds pretty crazy when you think about it. But in the 60s, this is how crazy it is with some of my crazy research. It was like half a million pounds per episode. Oh, Thunderbirds. For Thunderbirds. It's puppets. I know, but all the miniatures and the budget and all the other stuff, it goes so far beyond. I, I watched this on my me, Thunderbirds deck. It's me. insane. Three of us could make an episode. I know we could, yeah, anyone could. <laughs> but back in those days, filming it on film and all the other things, geez, it's insane. But anyway, no, Thunderbirds basically was, um, the whole premise of this was there was a, a retired astronaut who lived on an island, who owned an island uh, called Jeff Tracy, and he had five sons, and he secretly ran a thing called International Rescue, and basically he had an unlimited wealth of money, and basically 
incidents would happen around the world, whether it be like sabotage or like actual earthquakes and like freak phenomenon, he will send his sons into peril, uh, basically with these One of them awesome. Lived on a satellite. Yeah, on John. The so yeah, so Get they all there. lived in. They all had different vehicles, which was great. So Boy, Scott. Noise. So Fuck off. exactly. <laughs> so you had John, who was uh, in Thunderbird Five. He was in the space station, and basically. That was basically the beacon for where trouble was. So obviously, the whole hilariousness is John never liked anybody, so that's why they shoved him off in space. Gordon, who was the underwater, always used to drive all Thunderbird 2's like pod vehicles, but he was well known for like the submersible Thunderbird 4. Alan was num Thunderbird 3, which was the spaceship. Virgil, which everyone will remember, which was the giant like carrier of the pods, which always had cool vehicles coming out of them. They always seem to have a vehicle for whatever accident happens, one, it is the best one. And then you had like Scott in Thunderbird 1, which was like the recon one to get there and basically figure out what was going on and then Thunderbird radio back. Is the best one. But Thunderbird 2 was and by far the, the best like, one. If you think about Thunderbirds, I always, it's two. genuinely, I always think about 2. Yeah, 2 yeah. is the most iconic one. Actually, you've just not made me realise something. Virgil's got um, Sam White syndrome. Scott's there taking all the credit, but it's Virgil doing all the fucking work. All yeah, the work. yeah. So Alan, Alan basically did the odd thing here and there, and Gordon basically used all the other things. But Virgil was like, "I'm going to carry this around because if I crash, gonna... I crash." And that happens in an episode when he crashes it. And by God, that was glorious that episode. But no, yeah. So the whole thing was like that. You had hour-long episodes. I did. So I've got, there's other characters, but I don't really care for them because they were like, meh. So you had Brains, who was like I the like nerdiest brains. nerds, but then you had their undercover agents. They had agents everywhere, but Penelope. they only seemed to, Pen oh. uh, Lady Penelope and Parker. Yeah, now these, Lady Penelope. so they were all, they said they had agents all around the world, but yet there was only two of them. And it was always Lady Penelope and Parker, who was basically her driver because they always drove around in a bitch in, in pink car. Pink Rolls Royce, more British than you could ever think. You know that Parker used to be like John Wick. Oh, I bet he did. No, Imagine no. that if they'd made Parker a John Wick movie. I'd watch that. Par yes, my lady. Do, 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 do. Like, oh my God, that'd be amazing. Imagine if that's how John Wick 4 ends. <laughs> 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 what, he turns into a puppet? So <laughs> <laughs> but that was the thing. You also had like this. So I'm not going to line out. This might come off casually racist. So the, vig the, vi the villain of the whole thing was the hood. And he was an Asian. And the worst thing about it was... Everyone was raised, but, in but, Yeah, in the 60s, if you think about it, it was really bad. He had the thickest eyebrows ever. The best way I could describe it is, if I, if you, if I bring it up now on YouTube, Fernando Alonso from Formula One and The Hood have identical eyebrows, a.k.a., as I call them, Lord of the Eyebrows, because yeah, they are so, go <laughs> so thick at eyebrows. But he would literally try and capture... Uh, try and get the international rescue, aka Tracy, like Jeff Tracy's secrets. And his his technique was gl glowing gold eyes and hypnotizing people to do his dirty work. And he would wear masters of disguises and loads of other cool stuff to try and just wreak havoc on international rescue. But every episode, I loved it just because there was some crazy plot, and you would watch it, and you'd be like, I mean, I mean. I'm sold. There's an episode where they thought it would be a really good idea to move the Empire State Building. So they pick up the building, <laughs> let that set in <laughs> on on some sort of like equipment and started driving it. Funny what, enough, what was the grand scheme of the plan? They wanted to move it down the street, I think, or something crazy. Like what? move it over a little bit. I don't know. I haven't. I didn't watch all the episode because I I lost it when they said, yeah, we're going to move it down a little bit. Confuse them. Confuse them. The ground gives way. No shit, it's a giant big building. These newscasters that were there to film the um, the whole thing get caught underneath it. They have to go f like rescue it. So there's always some sort of like crazy accident or sabotage where some people are put in peril and then international rescue always have to rescue them. It's a bit like Superman in that way, isn't it? It is. Like, they're, they're picking and choosing who they're rescuing because oh, 100%. while they're busy doing that, there's lots of war going on in North Korea. Right? There's, there's so <laughs> much stuff going on. And it's always funny when you... Because how an episode is, you, you get to know the people before they get put into the incident of like chaos. So you like feel a bit sympathetic for them. Casualty, or, casualty style. Yeah. Like, and then and then you've got international up. rescue. And then Jeff Trace is like, we need to do this, this, this and this. Have fun. And then they go off and save the day. And, and the best thing about it was you had this epic score music. You had the minute miniatures and then obviously if there was like you had to have someone open a door or anything because they're puppets you couldn't you'd actually have footage of someone actually opening a door with a hand and stuff so with the, um, it's so good that played like civilians and stuff did yes they use them in different episodes yeah 100 yeah so yeah in the documentary they had 
the same voice actors put on different accents for for mm. other people as well, and they also Dangerous. just changed their yeah. wigs oh, and stuff oh, like that. I know really exactly. <laughs> but this was but no this accents. is but the funniest thing is about this was like we're Don't talking about, to the Scottish. about <laughs> we're we're talking about nineties here though, Lee. Why? Well, it was originally in the sixties, but it got rebroadcasted in the nineties, and then there was a big boom of it. So when I my mum grew up watching it, and so did my dad. So when it got revamped in the nineties, they were like, "You'd love this show." And I was like, whatever. And I watched it with my brother and it was the best oh, thing since sliced it. bread. It was absolutely incredible. I remember, I forget the name of the episode, oh, yes. but they used one with giant alligators in a oh, swamp. Yes, something controversial. Go for it. Something I enjoyed more than Thunderbirds. Are you going to say, cat? dun, 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 yeah, dun, dun, I am. dun, dun. This man will be our hero, for fate will make him indestructible. His name, Captain Scarlet. Captain Scarlet? Yeah, yeah, because he's play. indestructible. He is indestructible. That's why it also got cancelled as well. But that's that's more foot more not controversy, but I can tell you why Captain Scarlet came into Here we go, let's nerd out. So Thunderbirds made a movie it bombed and they tried to sell the rights to america it didn't make enough money so they basically went okay so we're going to sell it to america americans didn't want it so we're going to make a new show dun 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 dun, dun. and yeah so where does stingray come in before? stingray was before thunderbirds. stingray was badass stingray stingray was before thunderbirds stand by for action about to launch Stingray. That's what got them on the market because there was loads of other shows they did, but Stingray I think was Stingray the big might thing. be the best. Yeah, Stingray is the best. He's got the greatest theme tune. Like Stingray! Stingray! <laughs> so, we, like, the funniest thing I've about this. I've just sat here for like five minutes trying to think what the show was. It's Stingray. Yeah. yeah. And then you said it. Where the villains all go, blah, 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 blah. they sound like drown. <laughs> they always sound like they were drowning before they said hello. Like, just definitely merfolk. It was amazing. Like, and they always had a chase where they they would have the like the like fish blue thing. Blue and yellow. Yeah, blue and yellow yeah. submersible. I had that as a kid as well. Yeah. But yeah, so like if we just had it, then Jeremy Anderson like things. We had Stingray, we had Captain Scarlet, and we had Thunderbirds, all puppets. And the the best thing to describe it without going too crazy because it's in its own thing. If you've ever seen Team America, that's pretty much Thunderbirds. That is basically what it is. And yeah. that's it. And if you see how well Team America is done. Like how crazy, like obviously that's an extreme version, but like when they have hilarious sets, like we're going to set the Panthers on you and all it is is a kitten. Yeah, you have that in Thunderbirds and in some episodes where I'd say it's just mad. The detail in Thunderbirds there is, things, so. there is. They yeah. shot some things where they didn't actually try to get the strings in and stuff like that and the miniatures and it's it's so and good. Think about how the puppets are going to move. Yeah. And still got the, there's a lot of like counters in front of them and stuff like that. Yeah. Dodgy and it's <laughs> so good. And like it's it's really good. Like there's some some episodes that you're just like, I don't like this. And then there's some where you're just like, holy just shit, so that's good. incredible. Like Blair. and oh, just the music, everything. Thunderbirds, go watch it. It's probably all on YouTube. I got it all on DVD. Like that was probably one of the first ever box sets I wanted on DVD was the all the episodes of Thunderbirds. And I couldn't even remember I half. I feel of like them. that's a lot. 
It's not really out. It was like 20 quid when I bought it. No, like a lot of episodes. 32 episodes in total. Oh, is that it? Yeah, and they're an hour long oh, each. So you could do that pretty much over a, a longish weekend, kind of like Netflix these days. So it's not that long. Um, yeah, Thunderbirds. That was my jam. I love Thunderbirds. It was just so good. And it was just very British as well, which I love it because it was all filmed in England. So Next show. What are we moving on to? Well, the show that I thought of when we first like, mentioned this last okay. in this cast, uh, the show that jumped into my head was Nightmare. So, you like to play games, do you? And you think you're rather clever? And you're not afraid? Well, not very afraid. Very well, Dungeon Master. Bring on your brightest and your boldest. But remember, I play only the end game. And I always win in the end. Okay. I can't remember what day it was on, but whatever day it was on, I got it was a Friday, but I wouldn't go out until Nightmare had finished. I used to play football every evening. I'd go over the park okay. and stuff. I was very outdoorsy kid. But, but Nightmare. Nightmare. Yeah. Okay. We were around a mate's house. We were, we were around a mate's house. It had to be a mate I knew like liked Nightmare, so we can sit and watch Nightmare. Okay, <laughs> fair play. So do you remember Nightmare? No. Explain I don't. this. I don't. So I'm, ex- oh. I'm excited to hear this. So this is, this is probably early Nightmare. So okay. You, you two was a bit younger. I would probably say if it how how early are we talking? Like 92, 93? Oh, no, end of primary school was about yeah, 93, 94. 93, 94. Okay. So yeah, we're like five, six, yeah. four. Four. Yeah. There we go. Well, six. Younglings. Well, it depends. Yeah. Yeah. Young, we were younglings. Six. Yeah, we were <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we're we're younglings, Ben. That's what we can say. Um Sorry, Anakin. You would have loved nightmare. Really? Right, so I feel like I know what it is. But also, I don't. You got four kids, right? Okay. Three of them stayed behind, and one of them went into like the dungeon room. Let's call it that. Right. right. Okay. Is this a live action thing, or is it just like an actual TV show? Like, how is it? Uh, a bit of both. A bit of both. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So, the guy goes into the dungeon. Right. Puts his like barbarian hat on. Uh, okay. Like blindfolds him. Like, in, oh, okay. Like, so he's a full on like Iron Maiden style. Like, <laughs> oh, okay. Like, like, I can't see shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then he enters this like half virtual world. Okay. Half real world. Like, so there'll be real actors in this world. Like, right. So, and then they go on a quest. Okay, right. okay. Yeah, I don't remember this at all. This sounds... In- I'm intrigued now. I want to YouTube this and later. Like, these three mates would sit behind. Right. And they'd uh, basically guide him on this quest. So they would like, take two steps forward. Oh, take, okay. Take three steps to your left. Duck. Pick up the thing in front of you. Oh, like, right, so okay. And him like he was in a video game. Right, and okay. He'd like, come across like a troll. And like, so the background would be all like, digitalised. Like, right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearly, tell it was the 90s. You could clearly tell that's me, like, very, this yeah, drawing, yeah. And then, lots of actual bloke playing a troll would be like, stood there going, Riddle me this. <laughs> <laughs> I need to watch this now. This sounds amazing. So, you, you're saying that it was like, is the best way of describing it, you'd have someone, it basically, it looked like they were in part of video games, so you had like that kind of like. The best way of describing it is like a real life D and D. Oh, okay. All right. Crossed with like some kind of blue screen video game effects. Sick. So it's early '90s. So it's definitely very polygony. Yeah. And oh I like wow. To think that the kid in the helmet who's probably in some green screen room, like early green screen. <laughs> it's just actually like wandering around. They can't see. Can't shit. see anything. Genuinely, is just walking around blind yeah. for an hour. And then he goes like, "Wait till you see it come out," and he goes, like, "Oh my god, I was in front of like this." Okay. I'm in, I'm in. I'm going to watch an episode of this oh, now. Oh, yeah, you definitely Some need to. dude in a troll costume. 
Yeah, all hosted by some dude that looks like Hagrid. Like, fantastic. No, that's amazing. <laughs> not actual Hagrid, not though. Not actual Hagrid. Oh, that's a shame. But I've got a feeling it is Robbie Coltrane. That'd be I've amazing. I've watched it in a while. I should have watched it for some research, but I've got a feeling it is Robbie Coltrane. I'm so going to watch this after we finish recording this now. I love it. Nev, moving yeah. on. Ben, your show. Your next one. Hmm. I've said a few that I hadn't thought of. I know. There's a few. Uh, like, when we're talking about it, it's always fun. Oh, I can just fire him off, like... Well, we I covered all of Greg Anderson in, like, literally yeah, we've just done that, which is solid. Um, I'm having a bit of a wobble here. I said some earlier. Well, I want to go again. All you right, go then. again. You go again, again then. Talk. You go again then, Dan. puppets, right? Yeah. With Thunderbirds. Yes. And we can't do puppets without talking about Jim Henderson. Yeah. Now, I don't give a shit about those Sesame Street or the Muppets. Okay. My jam is the Fraggles. The oh. <laughs> what wait, is, wait, 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 wait. Sesame is, Street was the shit. It was. Wait a I minute. I was so into Sesame Street And as the a Muppets kid. is amazing as well. This is legit. I was so Fraggles into Sesame better. Street as a kid. I had an American accent. Brilliant. But what is the Craggles? Fraggles. 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 You don't know Fraggle Rock? Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, I know <laughs> Fraggle Rock. Yeah, you do. But you can definitely not say it's... Okay, it's up there with, like... The Muppets and Sesame Street. You can't say one's better. They're kind of all like, the level par. It was about a bunch of underground stoners. Like, what? What could... Sesame Street was better. <laughs> like, Sesame Street was better. I still co- quote the count to this day. Everyone quotes the count. I always... Oh, no, I, I keep quoting a lot of, like, Muppets recently. <laughs> like, a lot of Muppets lines. I'm the only one that gets it because I work with a lot of young people. So I'm like... Oh. <laughs> I, like I like Kermit. The rest of the Muppets. Swedish Chef is um, amazing. Or Bert and Ernie. Bert and Ernie. What about guys. whatever his name is? Old Beep Boop. Oh, um, Beaker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Beep Boop. Beep Boop. I love it. The old guys. Bert and Ernie, that's what he said. No, no Bert not Bert and Ernie. Ernie. The old guys. guys, hey, sorry guys. Yeah, those <laughs> yeah, guys. Those guys. Bert and Ernie were legends. Not 100% gay. There's a lot of great memes about Bert and Ernie. <laughs> A lot of great memes. <laughs> great memes. Oh, I'm against them being gay, but 100% gay. Maybe. Well, didn't they come out recently? Like, I'm pretty positive there's nah. Sesame Street controversy, I bet. Memes, probably. Probably memes. No, I think the Sesame Street controversy is about Katy Perry nearly coming out. Really? On Sesame Street. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah which wore a very um, provocative outfit. For Sesame Street? Yeah. Oof. Well, it's Katy Perry. It is Katy Perry. Have you seen half of her music videos? She's Oscar awesome. the Grouch was very grateful to be hiding in that bin. I bet he was. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why like, call me Big <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you just walk around and goes like, where's Grouch? He's hiding from you, Katy. Why? There's reasons. There's reasons why he's hiding from you. Oh, mate. Right. If we're going, have you got, have you got one, Ben, or not? Well, we just covered it. I could, I would have done set if I'd have thought about it. I'd have Sesame done Street. Sesame Street. I fucking love Sesame Street. Just far Street. away. Far away with Sesame Street, then.
it's, it's just, just great. Great. Nice. Fucking brilliant. We do re-quote the count a lot. Yeah. We do re-quote <laughs> the count quite a it's bit. It's just so good. One. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. <laughs> um, just so good. Like Everything about it. Elmo is hilarious. I don't know why, <laughs> but he is. I'm more into Cookie Monster. Yeah? Yeah. Grouch is my favourite. Grouch is my Grouch is solid. Is the, but I think that's because I've got older. I get it. Like, yeah. Yeah, I want to live in a bin. I want to... <laughs> it looks like a much easier just, life than mine. just want to be mardy <laughs> Just be mardy at everyone and everyone's alright with it because you live in a bin. Like, Give me enough smack to turn green and I'll live in a bin. Everyone's just like, he's mardy all the time. And he's like, yeah, because he lives in a bin. He lives in a bin. It's fine. But it made learning so accessible for kids to understand though as well at the same time. Looking back on it as an adult, it's just like... Genius. Genius. Literally genius. Genuinely happened. Yeah, because of Sesame Street. Well, Barney was terrifying. Barney's like, looking back on it... No, I want to smash his face in. Barney is terrifying. Barney's awful. Barney would be, like, the perfect killing thing if you made an adult, like, horror movie and it was Barney the dinosaur going around with a knife. That would be, like, the perfect... Barney. And your little kid walking around, pressing his belly and he's listening to... I love you. Of you. you. Oh, yeah, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking yeah. Bar- Barney. I'm <laughs> <laughs> That brings up that hilarious video of Amma, you know, when he was like doing that hilarious like YouTube thing where he's like doing coke and doing loads yeah. of crazy things. I love that. Play that. There we go. That's um, that's funny as hell. Probably the best version of Cookie Monster though is the Family Guy one. No, he did not. It's Where he's in the toilet. Yeah. Cookie dough on a spoon. <laughs> yes. Like, oh, it's so good. They it is so that good. Joke later on, don't they? When he yeah. Like, he Leave me alone. I've got a problem. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny. Like, yeah. very good way of looking at. It is so true. Um. Right. I'm going to say one that you guys probably never ever heard of. Finders Keepers. Yeah, no. Yeah, I, I think I can't so. remember this. And here is the owner of the Finders Keepers house, Neil Buchanan. Finders Keepers stars uh, Neil Buchanan, aka Man of Art Attack fame. Yeah. Yeah. You just through bringing him up, you've reminded me of one of my shows. You want to? There we go. So the whole idea. This was really cool. It's so it's kind attack. of like it's it's no fun house, but it's up there for me. So basically, you had two contestants, and this is crazy. Like looking back on it, they had the first ever kind of GoPro cameras on their kit on, on their helmets. They would have like a giant set, which was a house with like eight rooms in. And then basically every single person would start in like the bathroom, for example. And then they would say a clue like it doesn't brush your hair, but it can dry it. What is it? And they'll be like, oh, hair dryer. And then they would literally have like 30 seconds to just trash this room trying to find the hair dryer. Now, while the hair dryer is going on, well, while they're looking for the hair dryer, now watching this, I could not recall this as a kid, but there is fog machines going off, confetti cannons, strobe light, you name it, was being thrown in this room while these kids were trying to find it, and they had 30 seconds to find it. Wicked. Now, kind of along, along the same ha- line in Funhouse, it had, like, the ending of the show is basically you had all eight rooms were tidied up at the end of it, and whoever got the most points effectively went on to, as they called it, the super search. And they had to go through all eight rooms in four minutes. And however many rooms they got through, the better the prize. And then obviously if they got through to the end, I think they kept all the prizes or there was a bigger prize at the end. So basically they had to do all of it again, but different stuff. But obviously when you're running from one place to another in the house, if you found it, they would say, go to this room. And then Neil would read something out, go to that room. And he had four minutes and it was just pure chaos. And honestly, it was insane. It was bad shit insane. You could be making this up and I'd have to believe you because I do not remember this. Yeah, I remember it just right. because it was fun. I half remember it. It's insane. I'm sure he's not making it up. 
I'm just saying. But then There's literally no whatever whatever the object was, this is how like cultish it was. We were like re-watching it. They had the whole crowd chanting what they were looking for. So literally there was one where it was like they were looking for a fire engine and this whole crowd of kids screaming, fire engine, fire engine for 30 seconds <laughs> while these <laughs> kids are looking for this item. And if they didn't find it, they didn't get the points. But before it started... All the stuff would start, and then an arrow would point saying, it's there. And then Neil would be like, well, you're cold, you're warm. Oh, you're cold, you're hot. No, you're it's cold. a bit like Supermarket Sweep. Like Supermarket what Sweep. What a great show What a great that show one. that is. <laughs> Another phenomenal show. But yeah, Finders Keepers, absolutely Dale insane. Winston, what a lad. I think he was gay. Might have been. <laughs> Might have been. <laughs> Might have been. <laughs> so I bought up Neil Buchanan. Are you, oh, should we talk about Art Attack then? No. You want to talk about the other one? It's not Art Attack that I'm bringing up, but he is in it. He is in Art Attack. No, he's also in this. Okay, go for it. Zap. Yes. Weird. It was. And also brilliant. I like the hands. <clears throat> the handyman. You get the, the, the black, black screen. Two hands, and they do hands, shit. And they did shit. <laughs> and then the arty guy who did the drawings and shit. That was Neil Buchanan. Yep. He's like the little racist French thing, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you had uh, Cuthbert Lily. Yeah, that was a woman who was in black and yellow, no, right? No, Cuthbert Lily was the guy who was incredibly silly. Oh, okay. Who was the woman who was in black Daisy. and yellow? That's Daisy it. Dares You, I think it was. Oh, okay. Daisy Dares You, yeah. And Didn't they change her for some other shit? Yeah, maybe. There was like, It ran for a really long time. Yeah. Because it was fun, because it was like a giant comic book, and it would pan up to like the panel, wouldn't it? And the characters were yeah, all on this giant fully set. fully mental. Like, just weird. I can't remember massive Weird, details but, yeah, from it. But it was insane. I just remember being transfixed by it. Yeah. I'd be disappointed when it didn't go to the square I wanted it to. Yeah, yeah and it was, it? And it, but the <laughs> thing was... <laughs> my memory from it. But the episodes but, were like 10 and 15 minutes long. They were short, weren't they? Because it was like little skits it'd be like two, or whatever. You'd get like three yeah. couple of minute bits. And like, that was it. Done. And it was weird. It was glorious. I just, I just vividly remember it going like just the giant... The giant, the giant comic book. The comic book, and it would pan up with the camera, and you'd see all the characters trying to, like, Very entice weird. the camera. It was mad. It's like you're on drugs without being on drugs. So I'm glad someone did mention Neil Buchanan and the heart attack, though, because when I, when I was doing this research, oh. I was thinking about one of my things. One of my favourite um, TV shows was an art programme, not Heart Attack. Okay. But we're not going to talk about the art, because when we talk about controversy, this is one controversy Ooh. we're going to talk about, and we're going to talk about the artist. So we will talk about Art Attack, he did something very similar. Mm -hmm. what smart? Was, was it smart? Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And <laughs> what Neil Buchanan could do was, um, he'd the bit that I really liked was when he'd like, build a picture. Yes. And you had to just sit and wait and try and work it out. Was it the big art thing? Yeah. Big art thing. You know what my favourite thing about Art Attack was? The head? The statue. The statue, That's right. oh, yeah. yeah. Um, um, was, was it, was just it, amazing. Was, was the... Morph characters were they on Art Attack or were they on Smart? They were no, they were on Smart. They were on Smart. Okay. Well, it was, no, it wasn't Smart. I was thinking of. I don't know any controversy for Smart. I was thinking, do you know what it is yet? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that guy. That, that guy. guy. Oh. Oh, what did the Smart guy do? No, I thought. Oh, 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 I thought. I thought there was a Smart. <laughs> I thought there was a Smart guy controversy. There probably was. But no, yeah, the Neil Buchanan giant art thing, because it was basically, it would pan up, wouldn't it? It would start with him, and then it would pan miles out, and it would just use random objects, and you're like, what is it? And then all of a sudden, he would make and like a face. from really way out, it'd be a really cool picture. Yeah, and you're just like, and he would make it out of like carrier bags or something random, like just loads of random bits and bobs of stuff, and it looks sick. Oh, mate, I remember that. Welcome to Intermission. 90s cartoons. Well, before we get cartoons, there's okay. a game show. Okay. Because I'm thinking another one that was very fond of. Okay. Games Master. 
Yes, Channel 4, back in the day. What about the Games Monster Controversy? What, the Games Master Controversy? Can't be games master there controversy. is! <laughs> okay, Dan, explain Games Master before we do more conspiracy and controversy, because I feel like it's it always tarnishes our childhood a little bit. Games Master was a game show where people played video games and did like, challenges. So it wasn't yeah. so much a competition that ran throughout the episode people would come on and try and do a speed run of a yeah. Mario game or they'd play their mate at FIFA or they'd get the yeah. two leading Street Fighter champions in to like, have a game and back in the day we're talking before the internet when you can actually watch all this stuff you'd actually get to see people play Street Fighter and it was and previews as, and it was previews as well of video games as well that were yeah, coming out yeah. and stuff like that instead of reading them in the magazine of Games Master you could see yeah. it like visually which was like yes and I'm the in. guy who hosts um, Games Master I forget his name, but he had like a. They, they made him look like Modoc, is the best way of describing it for viewers. <laughs> no, I'm thinking about the actual human host, the guy that looked like the guy from E17. Oh, okay. I was just thinking of the guy who looked in a robot and he's like, hey, how's it going? you got to do this and this and try and get 30 rings and this and whatever. Did they want to be that? Changed that to uh, Trevor McDonald. Did they? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he looked like Murdoch. Kind of. <laughs> or Modoc. <laughs> Kind of, like, like a floating Trevor McDonald head. Yeah. It was a bit odd. But the guy <laughs> who hosted it, he used to have, well, obviously people were writing it for him, but his knowledge was always quite good. Yeah. Like, so he would actually talk quite in depth about different Fair. things. Fair. Okay. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, because I remember it was always like, they would come on and they would do like some sort of challenges sometimes, but then they would also preview games and talk about them as well. I remember it because it was always on Channel 4. But it was always at that time where I want to watch it. But also, all of us in this room are a huge fans of wrestling. And it always, on Channel 5 at the time, it was always kind of like, got to turn over to that WCW shenanigans or go on to the good old Sky back in the day and watch good old I was Raw. I was fortunate to have Sky yep. in the video recorder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, back in the day. Back, back in the day. God, what's, the what's the Games game Master, Master controversy? Surely it's the one to do with Mario Kart. It's not a massive controversy. So what is the controversy? The controversy Mario? was two guys got to a final of playing Mario Kart. Uh -huh. And Matey Boy claimed that he'd been set up. Cause, and I'm sure there's a video, there's a clip somewhere. Um, Dave Perry or... Dominic Diamond is somebody to look up for this. <laughs> Dave, um, essentially, I think in the video, he claims that the other guy had had the game... Beforehand. Previous. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, or early or some shit. Right. Um, so he knew the course. Oh, okay. On, I think. Welcome to intermission. <laughs> The game that was used for practice was Wipeout, apparently. Oh, so PlayStation 1 Wipeout. Yeah. But then they changed but it to Mario But when Dave Kart. wasn't... When Dave... They practiced on Mar on Wipeout when Dave was there. Right. And then when he wasn't there, they all played Mario 64. Oh, so Mario Kart 64. Yeah. And that oh. was what the actual competition was. Okay. Interesting. Sneaky. That is sneaky. I do like Wipeout, though. Wipeout's a banger of a game. Yeah, video, Great soundtrack. Video games is definitely another episode. Jesus, there's going to be multiple God chronicles. <laughs> multiple chronicles for video games. Like, us three all have different like likes for video games and genres and everything. I'm pretty positive we're going to have some hilarious ones. I'm going to need a long day for that one. <laughs> it's true. I can't wait to talk about Shenmue with you guys. I've been recently replaying that. By God, that's racist beyond belief, that game. I don't know how they got through Sega. Just the casual, the casual guy going up to people going like, do you know any Chinese people? I'm like, what? And he's like, obviously Japanese. And then he's just kind of going, yeah, have you tried the Chinese food shop? And you're I just like, oh my God. I can't wait to mention some of the great lines. Or forklift. Stuff. I always remember that because there's always one thing. You'll always forklift driving on Christmas day in Shemu. Yep, he didn't bother going home and getting presents. You were speed 
forklift truck driving racing on a dock in Shemu. But anyway, that's another episode <laughs> for another day. I fucking love that game. Um, cartoons, then. Cartoons. cartoons. Dude. Um, the one that jumps straight out to me is a Batman anime. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I have X-Men. Uh, like yeah. X-Men, Spider-Man, Batman. So this is how weird it was. Batman animated, I couldn't get behind. I think it's probably because I never I never read Batman. Like, looking back on it, I own it all now on Blu-ray. And by God, it is a perfect, perfect cartoon. It's unbelievable. Everyone should watch it. It's unreal. But I think because it was loud and proud, I would always remember Spider-Man and X-Men more than Batman animated. And I think because I think Batman had a bit more of a darker tone and a serious tone with its episodes, but X-Men, Spider-Man, su- the theme We're songs, to super loud, the X-Men so theme good. song because it's fucking it's so metal, so, so metal. <laughs> Batman animated series is so good. Like, holy shit, it's amazing. And it holds up now as well. Yeah. Some of these shows don't hold up. That holds up incredibly well. There were some bad episodes. It's true, but also we got Harley Quinn because of that. Yeah. We got Harley Quinn because of the animated show. We also got... Um, the... Mark Hamill and... <laughs> yep. Kevin Conroy. Kevin Conroy as Batman and Joker. Controversial, like who's your favorite Batman? Who's your favorite Kevin Joker? Conway. Kevin Conroy every time. Mark Hamill. <laughs> every time. <laughs> <laughs> every time. But yeah, I think just Spider Man and X Men stand out because. What about George Clooney though? What bat nipples? <laughs> Or the was it the back card he had as well? Oh, or was that about Kim? Oh. The, yeah, the back card. The back card. Was it? Was it not? Was it Kilmer who had the nipples? I can't remember. Some... No, 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 no. They both had nipples. They both, they both had, had, had nipples. nipples. Okay. Kilmer had nipples, and yeah. then with George Clooney, they all got bigger nipples. Oh. Real big nipples. <laughs> Real big nips. Okay. <laughs> great film though. But I don't know, so mad. Great film for not being a great film. Yeah. Like can't remember who played Robin. Anyone who can remember who played Robin in that film? Some the guy, the guy who play, who's in NCIS Los Angeles, okay. one of the main guys there. That guy. <laughs> that guy. Um, I believe it was Alicia <laughs> Silverstone played Batgirl. Yes, Alicia Silverstone did play Batgirl. Um, yeah, Jim Carrey as the Riddler. No. no. No, that's the other movie, isn't it? That's the Arnie other movie. Frost, uh, Frost. Arnie is Freeze. Yeah. And Uma Thurman as Poison Uma Ivy. Girl, Poison Ivy. Yeah. Bang. And Bane. Bane was... Didn't have an actor, I don't think. No, they basically had, had him... Man and a they play had stupid... Didn't he just go... Bane. Yeah, stupid yeah. Bane. They had stupid Bane. Most of it, and then 
toward the end, they injected him with the venom. And he yeah, he was he was big, but then he got real big. Yeah, he was just because no, they inject him. He's a skinny prisoner at the beginning. Yeah, and they and it's with a mask on. They've got he's a nobody, isn't he? No, he's just a prisoner. Yeah, because the scientist that works with what's it Ivy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. You're going to have to make me He says, oh, I'm doing this. And she's like, oh, that's, that's a bit dodgy, mate. That's like, a bit sketch. Probably, probably don't. <laughs> so he kills her, or he thinks he kills her. Okay. And then he's like, highest bidder, buy this dude that I'm going to make. Makes Bane in front of everyone. I'm sure like... <laughs> Saddam Hussein's there. <laughs> they're all watching. They're all watching. All the anyway. villains. And then she comes out alive, but turned into Ivy. And, uh, yeah, kills him. Okay. And takes Bane. I, mean, I need to watch this movie again. Or do I need to really watch this movie yeah. again? Okay, I do. Jokes such as what killed the dinosaurs, the Ice, I- the ice Age. <laughs> Mate, Arnie is Mr. Freeze was classic. What other great lines? Ice to meet you. <laughs> is it not when the police come and he's like, freeze? I'm sure there's a bit like Yeah, that. there's just, there is a freeze pun. He's, he did all the puns. It was amazing. It was made um, for Arnie. That's oh, what a shit film. The henchman, though. Freeze's henchman. All on ice skates. The because they like Batman's ice. boots Bass. that you can just like bash together like. It was insane. Turn into ice skates. I feel like there's skates. three movies that I just seem to bungle all together. That one, the one with Tommy Lee Jones as Two Face and like Riddler. All Batman Forever. It. Yeah, yeah. Do you know well, what? when Batman Forever came out, I Batman thought it was, was fucking cool. Yeah, I thought it was shit, and then Batman <laughs> Robin came out, and I was like, yeah. yeah. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> Forever right. Tommy Lee as Two Face, oh. a bit insane, but I like it. I reckon if they kept Tim Burton kept the cast and had it more serious kind of like how it was it in Batman and Batman Returns, Returns. Spice. yeah they never appeared in any other film no they never did no Sugar and Spice see I'm, this is the thing uh, Jim Carrey as Riddler was great Riddler casting was great. but obviously it was insane I, I think it was great casting but just again like the whole it's that super campy that right? movie yeah, isn't it the whole Batman movie's was campy it. which Batman was it was it Kilmer yeah I was going to say it's probably I want to say it's Kilmer as well. Yeah. Anyway, digression. Anyway, digression, as we always seem to do. So, no. So, another cartoon I liked. Yes. Looney Tunes. Love everyone. Loves, everyone loves Looney Tunes. I, I weren't big into the Disney characters, but the Looney Tune characters. I think they got a second win because of a certain movie starring a base, uh, starring a baseball slash basketball star. Space Jam. Space Jam gave them a second win because obviously Looney Tunes have been around for ages. Yeah. But yeah. then Space Jam catapulted them also back into the quite thing big again within that time period. Tazos. Yeah, Tazos yeah. as well with Taz. Yeah, dude. Honestly. Tazos. Looney Tunes is very iconic. Looney Tunes knew how to keep coming back. Yeah. So they just always knew how to read. Once people got bored of Bugs Bunny, they did yeah. Taz. Once people just got started getting bored of Taz, they did Fog All Leghorn. Yeah. Fog All Leghorn <laughs> is the greatest character to exist. <laughs> I do declare. <laughs> I do declare. <laughs> I just, he's just the best. Oh, he's so good in Space Jam. Oh, that, what he is in, he's, he's in not in, in it enough. He's not in it enough. Marshall. Although there's a lot. Marvin the Martian. Marvin the Martian. Marvin the Martian, yeah. Yeah. We're going to take over the world, guys. <laughs> mm, with my ray gun. <laughs> oh, Looney Tunes. Alma Ford. Oh, so good. Yeah. I'm hunting wabbits. I'm hunting well, whiskily wabbits. Semity Sam. Oh, mate. <sighs> Se- see what I mean? <laughs> they just re- keep reinventing He's themselves. A He's yeah. Great. Let's see if we get the same reaction. Lola Bunny. Lola mm. Bunny. <laughs> no one knew who Lola was until Space Jam. No one needed a Lola Bunny. Only bugs. <laughs> Only bugs, baby. Oh, my days. No, because I feel like we were spoiled in the 90s for cartoons. Like, we had such a golden era. And then I would even say in the late 90s and early 2000s, we had another big boom. But yeah, like, people, I think people honestly forget how Marvel were around. And then they had their little bits. And then. 
failed and dropped off the face of the earth and then obviously everyone knows Iron Man happened and then we had the second reincarnation of m- superhero movies and now we're kind of going through a phase of now we are where we earth. are we are where we are now but yeah Spider-Man was like one of the best shows ever like it had everyone in it it had the Punisher in it it had Mobius in it it had Blade it had War Machine everyone. it had literally everybody show up in Spider-Man and the first couple of seasons it was him fighting robots or mechs and then the Sinister Six and then you'd be like oh I'm just gonna you know oh yeah there's a crossover with the Fantastic Four oh yeah do you know there's a Fantastic Four cartoon oh there's an X-Men thing he wasn't in X-Men but here's an X-Men thing like you're just like when come on boy was about five he started watching that time mm. Yeah. And obviously, I'm forced to watch it. We've been like, this is a bit crap, mate. So let's, let's put the 90s one the on. The 90s one on. You won't really know the difference. The 90s, one, <laughs> the 90s ones were better. 90s ones was insane. They had a bit more story to them. And that Spider Man theme tune was mental. It was. Spider Man's metal theme. Remember. Yeah, Sp- and it's yeah. Spider-Man. It was yeah. just had that. It had like a. It was. It was a wavy bar of him going wow, 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 and it would be like Spider-Man. Sp- and it had oh mate, it's so good. I've played it already, and I'm I'm never gonna get bored of it. But that and the X-Men theme stick out because of the guitar. Like it's just so good. So I was actually when I was doing some pre- preparation for this podcast, I actually listened to a bunch of things see if I could name them. Okay. Some of them are easy, but some of the themes you just never forget. Such yeah. as Fraggle Rock. That we Fraggle Rock, like, yeah. I'll, I'll, probably, I'll probably still sing all that word for word. Uh, <laughs> the Poddington Peas. For some reason, I remember the all the words of the Poddington Peas. Yeah, the Poddington Peas. Um, At the bottom of the garden. <laughs> <laughs> amongst the birds and the bees. <laughs> Live the bottom. <laughs> there you go. Down at the bottom of the garden. There's creepy black eyed me and love Keep it a secret now, please. They're zippy, happy, and they're sweet. Hello, hello, hello. And all the What's so going on? There's creepy black eyed me and love Keep it a secret now, please. This gives me an idea. They're zippy, happy, and they're sweet. And all the parting to peace. The parting to peace. Oh, childhood. The other one was the Jetsons. Yes. Okay. And the moment they have like a little... You know exactly like, what it was. You know exactly what it was. Yeah. Because yeah. that was also the George era... Jetson. Yeah, the Jetsons were all like around kind of... I want to say... I always got the Jetsons muddled up with like... They had that kind of animation because obviously I'm assuming it's the same studio with Flintstones... Yeah. Want to say wacky races, catch the pigeon, that kind of style, wasn't it? Oh, Scooby Doo, you catch know, catch the pigeon, catch, catch the, the pigeon. pigeon. What are you snickering, floppy eared hound? When courage is needed, you're never around. Those medals you wear on your walking chest should be there for bungling it with you out there. A 
a show basically what the title was. Now there's a theme tune. That is a great Catch theme the tune. Catch the, the pigeon. pigeon. I feel like Nev's going to listen to it while we talk about it. I'm trying <laughs> to find a specific Catch the Pigeon quote that I used to say a lot. Oh, I love that. No, but I feel like... The Wacky Races. How many wacky people, Races. How many wacky Races can you name? Uh, not many. There's Penelope Pitstop. Penel- okay, so we're gonna put ga- okay, so we're back. We're back to game shows again, because we did it with the gladiators in episode one. Now we're doing wacky races. I know there was a there was a Frankenstein one. There was Penelope Pitstop. There was Dick Dastardly. Yep. Um, there was God, Dick Dastardly and oh, I forget uh, Muttley. Um, you then had I forget his name, but he had a white helmet on, and he was always buddy buddy with Penelope Pitstop. Yeah, well, I can't think of his name. Yeah, either, that he was in it. Is it Peter Perfect? It might be Peter Perfect. It could be wrong. Nev's going to like, he, he can look it up after he's looked up this cool quote from Catch the Pigeon. Um, you got the Cavemen Brothers. Yeah, the Cavemen Brothers. Yeah. They literally what just. About the Ant Hill mob. Yeah. Yeah. And then you had the Frankenstein kind of guys who were in like the Transylvania thing, weren't they? It, was, yeah. it looked like that. Um, oh, the Ant Hill mob were the best. Yeah, because that was basically mobsters, weren't they? Yeah. Oh. So I think we've named six or seven already. I bet there's more. There's got to be more. Oh, right. I'm going to play Wacky Races theme while we figure this out so we can... The joys of editing. (laughs) (laughs) Now, here they are. The most daredevil group of daddy drivers to ever whirl their wheels in the Wacky Races. Competing for the title of the world's wackiest racer. The cars are approaching the starting line. First is the Turbo Terrific, driven by Peter Perfect. Next, Rufus, Rupcut, and Sawtooth in the buzz wagon. Maneuvering for position is the Army Surplus Special. Right behind is the Ant Hill Mob in their bulletproof bomb. And there's ingenious inventor, Pat Pending, in his converter car. Oh, and here's the lovely Penelope Pitstop, the glamour gal of the gas pedal. Next, we have the Bowlermobile with the Sly Brothers, Rock and Gravel. Lurching along is the Creepy Coop with the Gruesome Twosome. And right on their tail is the Red Max. And there's the Arkansas Chugabug with Luke and Blubber Bear. Sneaking along last is that mean machine with those double stealing dew batters, Dick Dastardly and his sidekick, Buckley. And even now, they're up to some dirty trick, and they're off to a standing start. And why not? They've been chained to a post by Shifty Dick Dastardly, who shifts into the wrong gear. And away they go on the way out, wacky races. What was the quote that you wanted to know, though? I can't remember. Oh. Because that's the problem. But I, I know when I hear it. Yeah. <laughs> that means going through a lot of Catch the Pigeon. Me and my sister used to say it to each other all the time. Bless. So we got Mullin Dick Dastardly. Yes. Penelope P- Pit Stop. Yeah. The Caveman Brothers are called Rock Slag. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you slag. You slag. You slag. You slag. The Antil Mob. The Antil yeah, Mob. That That's one. it. Uh, the gruesome twosome who are the Frankenstein people. Yeah. Gruesome twosome. Gruesome twosome. We were right with Peter Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So far we're doing well. We forgot Professor Pat Pending. Yeah. Which one was, was that? He was riding like um, a two-man bike, a bicycle built for two. Oh! And did he have a white trench coat and stuff like that on him or not? No. No. I'm thinking of something else. Sounds like a ginger crackhead if I'm completely honest with you. Okay. Um, we got Rufus, Roughcut, and Sawtooth, who was a, bee- a beaver. Beaver and a lumberjacker. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And Clunk, who was also in Catch Clunk. the Pigeon. And Catch and Clunk's the, the ones that spoke. <laughs> 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 yeah. I can do Clunk. If we had to make our own discs, I think Clunk would be a good name for a putter. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good name. Like the Mogwai. The Mogwai and the Clunk. I want to be Clunk. <laughs> <laughs> every every time you get a birdie. <laughs> 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 like, it's the best character. I love it. No, but yeah, Wacky Races is also like, mate, there's so many great shows. Like we're just literally just this is why we love this show. And this I, is why I we think love this, this podcast. podcast could actually go on forever. And this but like, ever. could genuinely just ever. keep going. It's true. But no, yeah. Like we're not even touched on the we've got meant to be doing kids shows in the 90s, don't we? digressed into films and we've stuff, digressed that, all over the place that's the whole point but that but is the there point there were also shows that weren't technically kids shows that were your step into the world of adulthood yes now before I go on about the one that I want to quickly talk about <laughs> okay 
I do want to mention the one that everybody else talks about, and I think I might offend you a little bit early. Okay. You, you've never told me that you like this, but given the, the category of stuff that you like, I imagine that you're going to be a fan. I'm intrigued. But Doctor Who. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Doctor Who is a great show for kids. Okay. It is that great step that goes from cartoons and very, yep. very fluffy, lovely world to that next step of like, let's, yeah. let's take this fiction that's a little bit more serious. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. But adults who like Doctor Who are fucking retards, right? <laughs> Anybody that can turn around to me and tell me that Doctor Who's a great TV program, I've got a list of shit that will blow your tiny little <laughs> fucking mind. This has turned into a rant, an so, anti Doctor Who rant. So this I, is this is I my I love it. this I love this because I'm I appreciate there's two shows in science fiction that people love and adore, Firefly and Doctor Who. I appreciate what they've done for science fiction, but don't care for it. But I don't care for it. And literally I'm every time every time they bring up I uh, bring up Firefly, everyone's like, Lee, you're dead to me. And I'm like, I just don't like it. It's just Cowboys in Space. Shit. If I want to watch Cowboys in Space, what would we watch, Nev? HBO show. Watch fucking Deadwood. Or play Red Dead Redemption. Just watch Cowboys, yeah. Or watch Cowboys. Yeah. Or I would watch Cowboy Bebop, which is better and it's science fiction. As a um, child, a darling scary. As an adult, he's a fucking bin. <laughs> yeah. I love how rant this has become. You can throw a rock in it and All you need to win. do is lead it down a corridor. Yeah, <laughs> downstairs. And then trap it in. Right. But then this is how they got around it. it. It had Ed 209 syndrome. Like, you just go downstairs, it couldn't do it. But then in later series, they were like, it, it levitates. And then yeah. you're just like, it's oh, like you bastards. A drop kick it. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, they always ran downstairs and it was like, oh, they couldn't get there. And then later series, they started flying and shit. And I was like, that's how they got past I mean, stairs. For a sophisticated robot, it's got like cameras in the back of it, said. I mean, you could just sneak up behind it and go, push it bonk, down the stairs. Push it down the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> but then the thing, the idea is, what wasn't it like people were supposed to be sitting in them and all this other weird shit like they used to? Yeah, I'm not going down that whole I rabbit hole. People say, oh yeah, but the Cybermen are scary. No, fucking not. They're, they're te toasters as well. Like every every great villain that in science fiction, like Doctor Who has many. And I Loads. don't, and, and like all of them are on different levels. But some of them, when you break it down or you break down any show that you watch, stupid. Like Batman, look at Batman. Unbelievable cast of villains. If you break them down on paper, pretty Ridiculous. pretty fucking stupid. Like some of them, like pretty pretty stupid. But the show that I wanted to talk to talk about, that kind of like teenage show, that kind of like okay. Into adulthood. Okay. You were afraid of the dog. Yes. <laughs> I know of I know of this show. This is a ghost story. It's, it's a good, brilliant. It's a brilliant show. Every week, different ghost story. The, the only consistency was there was a bunch of kids around the fire telling ghost stories. Yeah. And they clearly shot all their scenes for every episode in one day. They never changed clothes. Yeah. And every week <laughs> they they start telling their ghost story, and then it is yeah magically turns into a live action version of that ghost story. A hundred percent. It I remember that fondly. Also, I don't know, I wanna say is it nineties? It probably is goosebumps as well.
Yeah, Goosebumps was like a more childish version. It was a childish version. That Tales from the Crypt. Tales from the Crypt. Now, that was based, that was for adults, though, wasn't it? Yeah, but that was definitely. Great. But that, that was great. great. <laughs> and I also had fantastic theme music. And also amazing practical effects as well. Yeah. Amazing practical effects. We de definitely need to do an episode on like. Just horror? Old ho horror. Jesus movie. Christ, that's a good episode. It's long and heavy. Friday the 13th, part 853. <laughs> Love Jason <laughs> Voorhees. Love, still have one of the best board games I own. Where is it? The unofficial, there it is, last Friday. The unofficial Friday the 13th Brilliant. board game. Unbelievably great. You guys need to play that. It's so much fun. But no, um, yeah, I don't know. Do we want to talk about any more shows? Or should we go around one more time, around the table? Or are we, are we happy with it there? Because, like, I I've love I love where it's gone. We've had some... Actually, you know what we haven't had? Scotty Two Hotty Facts. Scotty Two Hotty Facts. Turn it up! That was interesting. Turn it up! Right. What so is Scotty Two Hotty Fact of the week? I've tried to find a bit more of an obscure one, and I haven't found anything particularly obscure. obscure but okay. I can tell you his net worth. Okay. So Scotty Two Hotty Fact. Scotty yeah. Two Hotty Fact. I want worth. you to... I want you to both give me a number, so, and then I'll tell you what Okay, so he was a pro wrestler, and then he went and worked in their development camp for NXT, right? Coach? Now? Yeah, okay. I've only took this from one place, but okay. I'm taking it as gospel, so... I'm going to say three million. Keep it simple. Now, I'm actually going to say bigger, but when you said he was a pro wrestler, how did your brain go? That he made a lot of money in pro wrestling? No. no. He a lot of drugs in no, he was he was pro wrestler, but it was in the boom of wrestlers where they got paid well. And obviously him, for a small period, like Too Hot was really good. Too like, cool. Too cool, sorry. Yeah. Too cool were really cool because you had Rikishi, Grandmaster Sexy, and Scotty. I, I think he's got to be in the region of 15, 20. Oh, what, million? Oh, yeah. Ooh. It's five. Five, yeah. five million. Oh, I'll take that. Five mil. Wow. It's pretty good. I wonder if we'll be making more nail merch now. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Is, is, there a, <laughs> is there a call for hats with a hole in the top, though? I think we need to have a round of disc golf with hats in the hole. I did wonder if I could get a Scotty Too Hotty hat. I haven't looked properly. <laughs> <laughs> because I want one. You really want one? Yeah. Mm. Fair play. Five, Five mil. mil. Five mil. Net worth. So that's Indeed. after wrestling and his career in coaching. Five mil dollars. Yeah, dollars. Oh, yeah, that's dollars. Good. Okay. That's about three mil. About three oh. mil. Yeah, fair. Ish. Oh, back of the net. Take it. So, um, yeah, I believe that's another episode of Digression Session. We talked a little bit about our childhood fun shows. Hopefully, <sighs> this has made you guys out there want to check them out. And there's a few that are absolutely bonkers. There's an absolute long list. Of there shows is. I've not mentioned. Well, I was going to talk about crypto and fact. Yeah. Talk about I didn't bring up Power Rangers for reasons. I yeah. didn't bring up because everyone, if you're in the 90s, it was obvious that Power Rangers was one of the big ones. But yeah. I wanted to go a bit obscure with some of them because everyone in the 90s knew what Power Rangers was. It's still a thing now. Yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, still a thing now. Still a thing now. Oh, yeah, Turtles. Turtles, Turtles was Turtles, huge. Turtles, like all the Turtles videos. Yeah, man. And wrestling. And wrestling. We didn't bring up wrestling. That's going to be a separate one. Separate. Let's be honest. That's a big separate cast on its own. So, without further ado, guys, if you've enjoyed this, please leave a like. A like is much appreciated. If you've watched this on a YouTube, feel like leaving a comment about how crazy some of the shows you've watched and witnessed on the show. Yeah, I'm telling you, you can go down a dark hole of craziness when it comes to some of the shows we've talked about. Um, and then if you listen on Podbean, leave a like, all that jazz. And thanks for the download. We do appreciate it. So, episode three, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to think? Because I'm, I'm, because we've done 90s. Are we going to, are we going to do... I thought we said earlier we were going to do... Uh... Obscure music. Are we doing music? I think music would be a good one. But obscure bands. Obscure bands that like we weird like. Band things. Yeah, weird bands, weird music. Weird Jordi, bands. Placebo, that kind of shit. Oh. Weird. Weird cool bands. Band controversies. With what? Well, there's shit tons. Controversial bands to talk about. Okay. So the next one is just obscure bands we like or we know. Or we know. Or we're hilarious. Or whatever reason you want to bring them up. Bring them up. 
yeah, so probably Bloodhound Gang is probably going to be talked about all of us because we yeah. love that. For whatever band. reason you want to bring them up. Goldie Looking Chain, loads of other good bands, just bands we love. Oh, 